Hello, this is Mary Mack from Mary Mack Bakehouse. I just wanted to remind you that our store is always open on our website, marymackpodcast.com. We have 16 or so varieties of oat bran muffin mixes, uh, an oat bran oatmeal-based pancake mix, several bread mixes, I think seven different bread mixes. Four of those are rye's and some good dip mixes, a spinach dip mix, a funny little cheese ball mix that's really good, and some fruit dip mixes. And the reason I'm reminding you of this is because the holidays are upon us. And you know, food makes a great gift, and mixes make a great gift, especially healthy ones. So if you're looking for a unique gift to give to a unique person, check out our store on merrymacpodcast.com. Because you know what they say, the best way to someone's heart is through their stomach. Hello and welcome to Smoking Part 3 on In the Kitchen with Mary Mac. Yes, today we are going to talk about the epic turkey smoking recipe that we have developed. This hopefully will be a simplified, maybe easier maybe slightly less stressful and more fun than you thought it would be recipe. As in my other things that I do, I tried to find the easiest, best way to do the process. So um, we've smoked, oh Lord, I don't even know how many turkeys we've smoked. We have really a lot of pictures of smoked turkeys. We've eaten a lot of smoked turkey. <laughs> <laughs> so so we've done it a lot of times. And each time we've like, each time we do it, we're like, oh, we should have done this. Oh, next time we'll do this or whatever. So we've got it down to a pretty good, last year we added one new twist to it. So we've got it down to a pretty good science. And we, we actually smoked, let's see, we smoked a turkey this spring and we smoked a turkey this summer. So we tried out all of our methods. We've got it tried and true now. So we're going to go through this and tell you how to do it. If you've ever wanted to smoke a turkey, everything you want to know about smoking a turkey, but we're afraid to ask. That's what we should call this podcast. <laughs> so the first time we ever smoked a turkey, we borrowed a smoker from my daughter's boyfriend, and it was a propane-powered, master-built smoker. So the you, you a propane tank attaches to it, and it's kind of like a grill. That's what provides the heat. And it worked really well, and as I believe we said in a previous smoking episode... Probably episode 90, smoking part one. Yes. Um, like five of us ate the entire turkey with no sides or anything. And it was like a 20 pound turkey. We're not proud of that. Oh yes, we are. So <laughs> did we even cut the turkey or did we just tear no, into it? <laughs> no, we, we cut it. We, it was like, we sliced off a bunch. Everybody tried it. Then we sliced off another piece. Then we sliced off some more. And before we knew it, we had eaten the whole turkey. That's what happened. It just happened so fast. I don't even, I don't know. We were probably turkey high or something like that. So anyway, <laughs> As we've done it, we've gotten better. So I kind of made a list of the things that you will need to smoke a turkey, and then we'll get into the recipe and instructions and everything. So hopefully we'll also have this up online at some point. Um, so if you decide to do this for Thanksgiving, you would be able to do it. You need to start your prep several days in advance, though. So if you want to smoke a turkey for Thanksgiving and you're having Thanksgiving dinner on Thursday, you need to prep your turkey like um, Monday night or Tuesday night, okay? So that's just so you know, this is a week-long process. So first of all, this is what you need. You can smoke any size turkey. I have smoked up to a 20 pound turkey. And I want to say when I, the first time I smoked a turkey, the reason I did was because I heard a friend of mine interviewed telling how he smoked turkeys. And I'm like, I didn't know you smoked turkeys. What do you mean you smoked turkeys? So when I ran into him a while later, I said, Hey, uh, I need you to tell me how you, how you do this. Let me ask you some questions. My friend's name is Tony Robison, and he smokes turkeys all the time, and he's like a professional turkey smoker. So he gave me tips. He didn't give me a recipe. He told me basically what he does, and he gave me some tips. But 
he left me to find my own brine and everything because, you know, people don't want to give up their secrets. And I, I understand that completely. But I'm going to give up my secrets because I know how hard it is to do this kind of stuff. And it's, it's just tricky to figure it out on your own. And, you know, that's the whole point of our podcast is telling people how to actually make stuff yes. instead of using the recipes online that are missing a step. Yes. So, also, sorry about the uh, cat meowing in the background. She's wandering around <laughs> heckling today more than usual. She likes turkey and she's really ticked. <laughs> We're talking about it and there's no turkey. So Tony told me that you to smoke the turkey that you brine it. Uh, you brine it for a couple of days and then you put it in the, you uh, pre-bake it and you put it in the smoker. That, that was his basic outline. And that was really helpful because nobody, I've never found that information online. I've never heard that information online. So that's what we're going to do. And like I said, we've smoked a number of turkeys since then. So we've got it down pretty good now. So you can smoke, like I said, any size turkey. I've done up to a 20-pound turkey. You can smoke a 10 or 12-pound turkey just fine, same process. It'll just take less time in the smoker, but same process. So you need the basic brine recipe that I'm going to give you, and it makes a couple gallons of brine because you're going to brine your turkey. Brining does a lot of things. One thing it does is it helps to keep the meat from drying out. It draws impurities and, and uh, blood and things out of the meat also, but it also helps to seal in the juices. And your brine is going to give a, a mild background flavor to this turkey. It, it, this, this brine isn't overwhelming. It's flavorful, but not overwhelming. So it does give this nice flavor to the turkey, and it just enhances the turkey's flavor and also makes it smoke really nice. You need turkey roasting bags. There's usually, when you buy a box of them, there's two bags in one box, okay? So if you get one box, you'll have two bags. That'll be plenty. You need a large cooler, about a 50-quart size cooler, or if you have a spare refrigerator, or you can make a lot of room in your refrigerator to hold a turkey in a large pot, that'll be fine. You need a large pot if you're doing this in your refrigerator, like a large stock pot, because you're going to stand your turkey in that, in the turkey roasting bag that is going to be full of brine. It, it'll all come together at the end. If you're going to use a cooler, you're going to need ice. So you'll want to have a great big bag of ice on hand or make a bunch of ice in advance. And we are going to be pre-baking this too. So you'll need a sturdy baking pan large enough to hold your turkey or one of those foil turkey pans that you can get that's disposable. And then if you're going to pre-bake in the smoker, which is another little trick that we learned last year that we tried and figured out, if you're going to pre-bake in the smoker, you need a, um, it's like a 9 by 13 foil pan or a quarter sheet. You can set it on a quarter sheet in the smoker too, but the 9 by 13 foil pan or I think it's like the, I want to say they call it the lasagna pan. Um, that, that's uh, the perfect size. As I've said before in the previous smoking episodes, we have a master built electric smoker. So that's what we use, or you can use your smoker, whatever kind of smoker you have. If you have smoked in it before, Tony uses a charcoal fired smoker. That's like a grill kind of a smoker when he smokes turkey. So that also works. And like I said, we used a propane smoker when we did this the first time. If you don't have an electric smoker, you'll need to pre-bake your turkey in the oven. So that was a little shortcut that we accidentally discovered last Thanksgiving when we did not have enough room in the oven for absolutely everything. So it was kind of like, ah, oh, how about if we try this in the electric smoker? That was my husband's idea. He said, an electric smoker is kind of like a low temp oven. Won't that work? And I said... Oh, yeah, I think it will. So we tried it and it did work. So that was his idea. He's usually, my husband Terry is the guy that runs the smoker and gets the wood chips ready and keeps an eye on everything and checks the temps. So I do all the, all the prep, all the meat prep. I get it all ready to go. And then when it's time to smoke, he takes the ball and runs with it. And he does the smoking. He uses apple wood for his wood that he smokes with. And mainly because we have like, um, I don't know, 
a dozen apple trees around our house in the woods. So we have access to apple wood, and he likes to use green apple wood. But if you don't have green wood, if you're using dry chips, you'll want to soak it either in water or apple cider. If you're using green wood, you don't really need to soak it because it'll smolder nicely. So here's what you're going to do. And a few things are going to be happening at the same time. So this is kind of the rough order of things. First thing you want to do is thaw your turkey. Now, like I said, you want to get this in the brine like Monday or Tuesday night. So that means that you're going to have to get your turkey ahead of time a little bit, okay? If you get your turkey like from work and they give it to you on, say, Tuesday and it's frozen, that's going to be a little bit tricky. So you might want to save your work turkey in the freezer and go buy one at the store so you have a turkey to smoke, okay? And you want to make your brine. So when you thaw your turkey, like while you're thawing your turkey, you can thaw it in the refrigerator or you can thaw it in cold water. Uh, the cold water takes a little more time and you have to keep draining it. But you can do that in your sink and turn it and drain it. And, and it takes a long time to thaw. But I don't know what it is with turkeys. They're like, I don't even know. They freeze like you can't believe. So when you're thawing your turkey or getting ready to do this, say like, I don't know, Sunday night, you can make your brine. Because you want your brine to be cool. You don't want to put your turkey in hot brine. Okay. So you want your brine to be cool. So. You'll get all your brine prepared, make your brine, and then have your turkey thawing so that everything comes together at the same time. Here's the basic brine recipe, which I gave you in the previous smoking episode, episode one for chicken. It's the same brine, three cups of cider vinegar, two gallons of water, two tablespoons of rosemary leaves, dry, five cloves of garlic minced or five teaspoons of the pre-minced jarred garlic, one, and that's the fresh, not dried garlic, the fresh garlic. So five teaspoons of the pre-minced fresh jarred, boy, that's hard to say, fresh jarred garlic. Uh, one cup of kosher salt or sea salt. Do not use table salt in your brine. It's too salty. It, you don't want to use that. You want to use either kosher salt or sea salt. Two cups of brown sugar, three tablespoons of whole or cracked peppercorns. Now, if you use cracked peppercorns, it's going to be a little bit spicier just because they're cracked open and the, there's going to be more of them, you know, than the whole peppercorns. But it's really good. If you like black pepper flavor, if you like the taste of that and a little bit more spice, it's good. And then five whole bay leaves. So what you do is you put a large pot on the stove, like the large pot that if you're resting your turkey in the fridge that it's going to be in, that pot. Put everything in the pot and bring it to a boil. Let it boil for a little bit, a couple minutes, then turn it off, remove it from the heat, and let it cool because you want all those flavors to meld together in your brine. Okay? Now, for your first try on the turkey, don't, well... I recommend that you don't add or subtract anything on your first try, okay? Because this is a really good brine. It has a very nice flavor, and it's kind of nice to use it as it is first, and then if you want to tweak it the next time you do a turkey, like try it like this and say, eh, I really didn't like the rosemary. Take that out. Add something else. So just try to follow the basic recipe exactly as given on your first try and then tweak it afterwards because I think you'll find that you really like this. And it's kind of funny, uh, especially for brines, that you can add something and say, you know, go like, oh, I really love thyme. And then you put thyme in and it's completely overpowering. I want you to enjoy this. So please, please don't add or subtract anything from the brine. Okay. So now you got your brine ready. You're going to, it's cool. Um, you can store your brine in your refrigerator for a couple days, even if you need to, until your turkey's ready to go into it. You can make it in advance. I would say you could probably make it five days in advance and have your brine ready. Or you can make it, like I said, Sunday, the day before. Let it cool and put it in the refrigerator until you're ready to use it. Okay, this all implies that you have a giant refrigerator or that you clean your refrigerator out. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of fridge space. <laughs> Or have the spare, those of you that have the spare fridge in the basement or garage are going to be like, yeah, this is great. What you're going to do with your turkey is take it out of the packaging, 
rinse it off well, remove all the extras that are stashed inside the turkey, you know, those disassembled parts, and then I trim any extra fat or skin off at this time because you don't need to you don't need to have all that stuff on there. So if there's large pieces of skin or fat hanging off, trim those off. Make sure your turkey's nice, nice and clean. And then this is how I do it. I get an extra person to help me, like my husband Terry, because I always need two extra hands. And you get a turkey, one of the turkey bags, open it up, fluff it out. And then if you're using a cooler, have the person hold the turkey bag open in the cooler and then take the turkey and carefully slide it into the turkey bag. So it's kind of like standing up in the cooler and leaning with the neck end of the turkey facing up. Okay. Once you get it in there, have your person hold on to the bag and carefully start ladling brine in there. Make sure you get all the herbs and everything and just start ladling that brine in until you've got, it usually will take most of the brine, if your turkey isn't enormous, it will take most of the brine into that bag. Once you get the bag as full as you're comfortable with, twist the top of it, put a twist tie on it, and carefully, if you're using a cooler, lay it down in the cooler. If you're going to be using a big pot, do the same thing. Have the person hold the bag open like in the pot and then lower the turkey into the pot and then start ladling that brine in until it's filled up. Because what you do is you can squeeze the air out of it so there's no air in it so that way the brine is contacting the entire bird. The reason I started doing it like this is I tried brining it itself. I got a cooler and I just brined it in a cooler and I kept adding bags of ice to it. And I found out I was really having trouble keeping the turkey cold. So I found out if I do this in the bag, I can just keep dumping ice in there and then I can drain the cold water off. If it's, you know, too much water gets in there, I can ladle the water out. And I actually just left the cooler in my kitchen off to the side so that I could check on it easily because it's only going to be there for like two days because you want it to brine like two or three days. So now you've got your turkey in the turkey bag with the brine sealed up. And if you're, like I said, if it's going to be in the cooler, cover it with ice, put a lot of ice on it. If it's going to be in the refrigerator, put the thing in the refrigerator. And you want to make sure that your bag's sealed really well. I always put the twist tie on it and then I fold the top over and then I put another twist tie on it just to really seal it. Okay, now... You want to just, if you're using a cooler, what I did, I took a heavy folded blanket and I just set it on top of the cooler because that really helped to insulate because for some reason cooler lids, like why would you not put some insulation in the lid? I don't know. They seem to be not too well insulated. Say you do this Monday night, you're going to make sure you have ice and it. Tuesday morning you get up, you're going to check your ice or, you know, in the fridge you're fine, but check your ice, make sure you have ice on it. Now, when you get to Wednesday, now the work begins. You want to pre-bake your turkey because it will come up to temp faster. That way it doesn't have to smoke for like, I don't know, two days in your smoker. So what you do is you take your turkey out of the brine in the evening because you, you want it to pre-bake for like 10 hours at 200 degrees, okay? Because it's not going to be cooked. It's going to be warmed up, but it's not going to be cooked. So you want to take your turkey very carefully out of the brine. The way I usually do this is I pick up the entire brine bag gingerly <laughs> and put it in my sink, and I open it and lift the turkey out of it and set it in the other side of the sink and start to rinse it off. You can leave some of the spices stuck to it, like the peppercorns will stick to it. You don't want to leave a ton of stuff on there. Okay. Rinse it off. And then what I do is I put the turkey in the other turkey roasting bag that's clean, put the turkey in there, seal it up, poke a couple holes in it and put it in either, like I said, either a foil um, turkey roasting pan, or if you're going to do it in your smoker, you want to be able to fit the foil pan into the smoker. So you might want to use like the lasagna size pan put it in there and you are going to, if you're using your oven, set it at 200 degrees. If you're using your smoker as an oven, set it at 200 degrees, put your turkey in there and let it go. What will happen is it will heat 
to a reasonable temperature so that when you go to smoke it, it's, it's not cold inside. It's, it's, um, almost up to temp. So you do that in the morning. What you're going to do, let's say you're going to eat at three o'clock in the afternoon. You're going to have your Thanksgiving dinner. So the next morning, Thursday morning, you're going to take your turkey out of the oven or out of the smoker, set it on your stove top. And this is all you have to do for your next step. You're going to get some really well insulated oven gloves, <laughs> remove your turkey from the roasting bag and get it ready to go into the smoker. Now you want to have your smoker at about, we generally smoke it at 250 degrees. You can smoke it at 225 if you want to smoke it longer but we put the smoker at 250 degrees, put our chips in, put water in our water tray, get it all set up, and we set the rack about in the middle of the smoker. So the smokers have like four racks in them. So I think if you go like the third rack down, that leaves you a little bit above the water, but far enough from the top that the turkey's not real close to the top. Okay. Get your smoker ready, get it smoking, and then you want to take your turkey out and set it breast side down on the rack and shut it in there and let it smoke. Now, the first time that we smoked a turkey, we set it on its back on the rack and smoked it. It came out really well and it tasted really good. That's the one that we just basically ate. That was our dinner. Uh, but but when, after we did it, somebody said, hey, you know, if you put them breast side down, all the juice goes into the breast. And I'm like, oh, I never thought of that. So the next time we did it, we laid it breast side down and it was so much better. Even though it was fantastic the first time, the second time it was just amazing. So that's what we always do. We don't put the turkey in a pan when we smoke it. Um, I'm going to have some pictures up that you can see and you'll be able to see pictures of the turkey in the smoker and after it was taken out of the smoker, and you'll see, it, it looks like it's made of plastic. I mean, it's, it's wild. The skin gets really, really thin, shiny, and brown, and it's, it's just amazing. It's absolutely amazing when you see it. Okay, so you're going to have your turkey at 250, and you want it to smoke for about four to six hours, or until it reaches 165 degrees internal temperature, or the little plastic thingy pops out. The one turkey that we did last year, the, the plastic thingy popped out just from being in the oven because I put the oven on the wrong temperature, but we went ahead and smoked it anyway. And it was fine. It was like amazing. It didn't, it wasn't dried out. It wasn't overcooked. It didn't taste bad. I mean, it was really good. So you want to just take your turkey, put it in your smoker, um, set your temperature. Some smokers have a temperature probe that can actually go into it while it's smoking. That works fine. Um, I always, like I said, I recommend using an electronic probe to check your temperature. And you can check it as often as you like. However, remember, every time you open the door, you're going to let smoke out, okay? So once, this, once your turkey reaches 165 degrees for the internal temperature, it is done, okay? When it's done, you can bring it inside wrap it in foil and let it rest for 15 or 20 minutes, and then it will be ready to go. So of course, all of this time frame depends on the size of the turkey. If you're going to be doing a very small turkey, like a 10 pound turkey, I would not pre-bake it for 10 hours. <laughs> I would pre-bake it for maybe five hours, shorten your time a little bit, take less time to smoke. So you'll just kind of have to play it by ear on that part of it. But the brine recipe is the same. The amount of brine is the same. The time of brine is the same. All of that's the same. So the only thing that you really need to adjust is your pre-baking time and your smoking time. So how's that sound? Does it sound easier than you thought? I mean, it's long. That was a lot of instructions. But the thing that I love about doing a smoked turkey for Thanksgiving is like all of your prep time is early in the week. And then Thursday morning, when you stick your turkey in the smoker, like you're done. It's, it's in the smoker, you're done. You don't put stuffing inside of it, obviously. You don't put anything inside of it. And it's just out there smoking. And the other thing that I love about it is it's out there smoking. Your oven is free. Your kitchen is free. 
you know, you can do whatever you want in there while it's smoking. Now I want everyone to try this and report back on how it goes. <laughs> now you can get the butterball rolling. Get the butterball rolling. I've been rolling. holding in that pun the whole episode since you first said get the ball rolling. Get the butterball <laughs> rolling. That's fantastic. You should you should write that the butterball. Maybe they'll send you a check. Ha! <laughs> Oh, so we, I mean, this is, ever since we started doing this, I just love it. We had a, we actually had a family reunion this summer and I'm like, Hey, I have a turkey in the freezer. I'm going to smoke it. I mean, it's great. I'm always getting people that say, Hey, uh, we got a turkey at work and I'm not going to use it. Would you like it? Yes, I would. And I'll just smoke it. it. It's, it's just fantastic. It's a fantastic thing to do. And like, it's, I don't know, it seems like a lot of prep, but it really isn't. So if you, you know, if you want to try it, give it a try. Even if you don't do it at Thanksgiving, it's fun. Smoking a turkey is fun. And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> well, make sure to check us out online on Facebook and Instagram at Mary Mac Bakehouse, on Twitter at Mobile Mary Mac and Mary Mac Podcast, and on our website, MaryMacPodcast.com. Thanks a lot for listening if you did. And if you didn't, too bad for you.